What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the TF Movie Show. This is just Webster's where we talk about the Transformers movie franchise. This is episode number 79. And in this episode, we got some pretty big news that affects the future of the Transformers movie franchise. This was posted on TFW2005.com. And the headline here is Paramount Pictures CEO Jim Giannopoulos to step down studio to drop big budget movies. Well, that sounds pretty alarming. I'm going to read you what it says on the posting at TFW and uh, I'm going to provide you with some of my feedback. Okay, Following the underwhelming box office deal of Transformers last night and China's clampdown on foreign investment, Wawa Media has left its partnership with Paramount Pictures at the end of 2017. Wawa Media was supposed to fund 25% of the next two Transformers movies and 25% of all Paramount movies until 2020. 2017 was not a kind year for Paramount. That year, the movie production giant saw a loss of $445 million, where $100 million loss was from Transformers The Last Night Alone. Enter Jim Giannopoulos. Mr. Giannopoulos took the decisive, decisive decision, turned things around for Paramount, and it worked. At the end of 2017, Paramount Pictures entered a new agreement with Hasbro where the toy giant would chip in more money to their movies, but at a greater creative control. Such steps ensured the financial safety of Paramount, and the company went on to produce critically acclaimed movies such as A Quiet Place and Bumblebee under new leadership of Jim Giannopoulos. All things must come to an end, so does the tenure of Jim Giannopoulos. We wish him the very best for his future work, and we also miss his, wish his successor, Brian Robbins, a wonderful state with many Hasbro movies to follow on. A closing note, Paramount has expressed their interest to drop Big budget movies in favor of smaller productions that will go directly under streaming service Paramount Plus. With what this is all setting up, according to insiders, is, is Paramount retreating from big theatrical productions to focus on titles, remakes, branded content, cheaper fare that will serve as its streamer Paramount Plus Forest Kid journalist says there is a likelihood that this move may affect the pending renewal of the aforementioned agreement with Hasbro at the end of the year 2022. Um, you can read the rest on Deadline and Hollywood Reporter. So this is obviously a pretty big deal. How will this affect the current movie that's under production right now, Transformers Rise of the Beast? It will not affect it at all, except it is possible that, that Transformers Rise of the Beast could actually um, show up both in a day and date release and what that means. I think it's a really saying, a, a really silly name to call it a day and date release. What that means is that it uh, it releases on, on, on theatrically as well as streaming at the same time. So um, uh, that is something that they could do. I think it's a silly strategy, strategy but I don't know very much about uh, like how all that works. In any case, what it means is that it shows up in theatrically if, you know, people don't want to subscribe to Paramount Plus. They can watch it in theaters. You know, pay pay at regular ticket prices or premium ticket prices, and you know, it contributes to the box office. And then, of course, uh, there is the Paramount Plus streaming service where the money goes directly to the the streaming service, right? So, uh, which of course is a subscription service. So, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's still revenue to the studios. But, you know, ideally, you'd want it all to go theatrically because that way you don't give the viewers a choice. But they have to watch it in theaters. Uh, so that would be the most ideal outcome. But that is just a scenario that could happen. In any case, Transformers Rise of the Beast is still uh, uh, being released on, in its uh, 2022 release date. Summer 2022 release date. But what about the other two movies that are in production? Uh, the Transformers Cybertron prequel from, um, from the guy who did Toy Story 4, Josh Cooley. Uh, cooling cooling yeah <laughs> anyways um that one i'm positive is is happening for sure and i it's much smaller budget anyways it's not it's not like a live action film so obviously that's going to have a smaller budget so i don't think it re affects that film because it's uh, it's already under production i think they're already working on it they're developing it uh and we just don't know what the release date for that is so i don't th I think that affects it at all but what it does affect is potential that might just go straight to Paramount Plus. So that sounds like something that could potentially, uh, that, uh, you know, it's very feasible, very plausible that it's going to end up in Paramount Plus. Um, as for the other film, there's one more film uh, from director, director uh, and Angel Manuel Soto. Uh, this is a film that's completely separate from uh, Rise of the Beast. I don't think it's tied in together. It's a completely separate film, like its own story. 
that film, uh, that film could be affected. Because first of all, that film probably isn't going to be released until 2025. At least that's what I think, or 2024 or 2025. Okay, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, but I, all we know is that it was just it's still being written uh, or pre-production. I don't think it's pre-production. There's not a lot of news about it. I think it's just being written and they're looking for the right script for that film. But what's going to happen is with these budget cuts and with, with, without a, um, uh, a Chinese financier who was going to invest in the film then they definitely need to, um, uh, definitely need to, to, uh, uh, um, you know, probably bring the budget down. They're probably going to cut some things in the script that will involve a big budget sequence, like a big budget action sequence. They're going to cut it down unless Hasbro decides, unless this, uh, Brian Robbins, who's the successor of Jim, Jim Genopolis, is able to somehow, uh, persuade Hasbro to throw in more money so that they can get this, they can get what um, Huawei Media wasn't able to contribute, or at least uh, could have contributed um, uh, had they stayed on board. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, Transformers: The Last Night had a huge, huge contribution to this 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 move. Okay, Transformers: The Last Night was a critical and uh, financial failure. Okay, it was a bomb. It made the the production lose it made the studios lose a hundred million dollars and it lost it lost them a uh, a, a a Chinese investor so um, so you know that that you know that really hurt Paramount so uh, had they made a better movie then and, and had it been a a major box office success, then this wouldn't be happening. In any case, it affects it in a much larger scale because now, without all the financing, uh, we have a, a, a um, animated film going straight to Disney. I mean, uh, Paramount Plus. Uh, at least that's what I believe. And then we have a, a live action film that's either not going to happen. That's the worst case scenario, or it's going to be chopped down. So that it's going to be a, a less expensive film. So essentially, it's going to be a smaller Transformers film, kind of like Bumblebee. You know what I'm saying? I think that having a smaller Transformers film on the level of Bumblebee would be more plot, more more feasible at this point, uh, because if they're going to have major major budget cuts, and then at that point, what's next? Um, well. The, uh, what would be next would be just to distribute it for Paramount Plus streaming. That way, they would take a, a smaller loss in case that this is a, um, uh, a box office failure because they still have to pay other things. They don't. When you get box office money, you don't. It doesn't just all the money just go to. You got to pay the theaters. You got to pay the 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 the, the, the di dividends to the actors and the directors if, if there is such a deal. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things involved, right? But with Paramount Plus they can get the, um, the, the, the money, the revenue directly to them, you know, uh, uh, with, with a percentage to, to, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the uh, cable companies or something. I don't know. I, I don't really know everything about this or how it works, but in any case, uh, that's the worst case scenario. Like it doesn't happen at all, or it goes straight to Paramount plus and it's a bumblebee scale Transformers film when originally it was going to be a full on Transformers film, just like the first five. So, um, yeah, that kind of sucks. That really kind of sucks. You know, the, when it comes to foreign investment, the Chinese investors are the ones with all the money. I think what they should do, Brian Robbins, um, as the successor to Jim Giannopoulos, uh, could convince Hasbro to dump in more money and tr look for another foreign investor. Uh, but unfortunately... China has a clampdown on foreign investments, but you know, there are some, maybe, you know, who doesn't love money? They should try to find somebody, find some investor that should, should make it happen because you know, it's all about me. <laughs> I want to watch the movie. <laughs> it's all about the fans. And at the end of the day, it's a business. They, they, they want to make a good investment. Okay. Anyways, that's what that really means. Okay. If you want to look at the, it from uh, all angles, that's what it really means. Um, that's all I got to say. Um, disappointing news, but you know, you know, things will get better. Things will get better. Uh, we'll see what the, what the 
at, uh, we'll see what the result of Transformers Rise of the Beast is, and maybe that will um, be the catalyst for some different business moves, okay? My name is Zog, see you, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, peace.